Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Rumble, Spotify, and YouTube. Today we continue in our study of the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 50, verses 22 through 26, which reads, So Joseph dwelled in Egypt, he and his father's household. And Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were also brought up on Joseph's knees. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. That's Genesis chapter 50, verses 22 through 26. Today we conclude our long study of the book of Beginnings the book of Genesis. This book of Genesis gives us the first of everything, including the beginning of all creation, the beginning of sin, the beginning of sacrifices, the beginning of redemption, and the beginning of eternal life. As we have noted before in this final chapter, there are three burials. The burial of Jacob, the burial of Joseph's brother's sin, and finally, the burial of Joseph. Today, we close out our study with considering Joseph's death. In verse 22 of today's passage, we read, So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph was born right around the year 2260 B.C., he lived 110 years and he died in the year 2370 B.C. Joseph lived 54 years after the death of his father Jacob. Joseph remained in Egypt for the remainder of his days. When he was 17 years old, he was sold into slavery by his brothers to Israelite traders from Midian who took him to Egypt. As a result, Joseph lived in Egypt for 93 years. The remainder of his days were spent outside of the land of promise. The only time Joseph left Egypt was when he went to bury his father in Canaan. In all, Joseph was the second most powerful man in Egypt for 80 years. In verse 23 of today's passage, we read, Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were also brought up on Joseph's knees. Joseph lived long enough to see his great-great-grandchildren. In all, there were five generations of Joseph's family living at the same time, which was in fulfillment of Jacob's blessing of Ephraim over Manasseh before his death. In the line of Manasseh, only his grandchildren are noted during his life. Being brought up on his knees means his grandchildren enjoyed a close relationship with their grandpa, involving the passing along of his wisdom and God's blessing from one generation to the next. In verse 24 of today's passage, we read, And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. With the sure knowledge of his soon death, Joseph repeated the promise of God to his brothers. In doing so, Joseph emphasized our absolute need to be defined by the Lord on a day-by-day -day basis. While the world and our flesh tells us to be self-confident, 
the Bible reminds us to find our confidence only in the Lord God. Confidence in ourselves is circumstantial. It is often based on our pant size, how much money we make, or whether we fit into the context we find ourselves. If our confidence is in God, we will grow to be the most secure people in the world. As a result of knowing God and His will for our lives, we will have the courage to take the risks that He calls us to take. We will love others, dream big, and think and do the unbelievable by His grace. In verse 25 of today's passage, we read, Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. Joseph knew what he believed, and he subsequently belonged. His disposition was rarely determined by anything outside of his faith in the God of the Bible. These are the last recorded words of Joseph. Just like his father before him, Joseph now required an oath from the sons of Israel. Despite bearing an Egyptian name, having an Egyptian wife, and being the second ruler of the land of Egypt, Joseph remained always and forever an Israelite. His desires for his people in his land never faded, and his devotion to the God of the Bible never faded. And so, once again, he repeated the promise of God's presence among his people and his desire to have his bones buried in Canaan. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 22, we read, By faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. Despite all of the many things Joseph did in the fateful patience he exhibited toward his circumstances and those around him who afflicted him, Joseph was above all noted for his faith in the God of the Bible. His was a testimony that God simply desires and requires of us simple faith. For many, faith is based on creeds and doctrine and head knowledge. It's about mastering the facts and making sure we give the right answers when any spiritual question is asked. But biblical faith is not about mastery, but about mystery. And that living in that mystery allows us to focus on our relationship with the God who created us and who is recreated. Joseph's request was fulfilled by the Israelites as they marched out of Egypt approximately 286 years later. We are told in Exodus 13, which specifically says that they carried Joseph's bones out with them. And eventually another generation of Israelites carried them into the land of promise and buried him as is recorded in Joshua 24. And so, the narrative of the immediate family of Israel ends with the promise of redemption from Egypt, which is based on the oath made first by God to Abraham. In verse 26 of today's passage, we read, So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Upon Joseph's death, he became the second and last person noted in the Bible as being embalmed. After this, his remains were placed in a coffin. This is the first usage of the word coffin in the Bible. The next time this word is used will be to describe the Ark of the Covenant. Everything associated with the Ark of the Covenant points us to the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the mercy seat, where God sees us as forgiven through the blood of his son. Joseph's coffin was probably made of the same wood as the ark, acacia wood, 
which is incorruptible. The book of Genesis began with creation, including the creation of man. No sooner had man been created did he rebel against God in the spiritual death that came, came to be his norm. Since that time, the premise of the Bible is that man is born to die, and physical death has become a scary reality for us all. The book of Genesis ends without the fulfillment of the promise of the Savior. But God's promise of our Savior and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, has been fulfilled through the cross of Calvary. The Lord Jesus overcame sin and death by laying down His life. When this gospel is met by our faith, we will have similar faith to that of Joseph, bold and confident. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.